want to seal the border, vote Trump. If you want to restore law and order in this country, vote Trump. If you want to defeat the deep state, vote Trump. If you want to fight inflation, vote Trump. If you want to revive national pride in this country, vote Trump. If you want to revive our national identity in this country, vote Trump. If you want to make America great again, vote Trump. That's how we're going to win this in a landslide in November, like Reagan delivered in 1980. If you want yes, sir. Yes, sir. Support Uncle Trump. Now, we got to talk about the border today um because the supreme court made a ruling but i have a theory as to what is going on and i want to get your thoughts and opinions on what i'm going to say about it because I'm, I'm really interested to hear how all of you feel about it um because I, I i was a little confused but just i'm gonna play this clip really quick and then we're gonna jump into something else check it out i want to bring in cbs news contributor and loyola law school professor jessica levinson now jessica first of all thanks for joining us uh, we've we've talked about these different efforts that whether it's for political reasons or for practical reasons um governor abbott has implemented despite not really having as the governor of a state the jurisdiction to implement uh carry out uh, immigration law what do you, first of all, talk to us about what this uh, four or five decision um, means and, and for how long will the state of Texas, I'm sorry, the federal government be allowed to remove this razor wire? So we don't know. This is temporary. And there was, as you said, there was a suit by Texas against federal border patrol agents saying you basically destroyed our property and you trespassed on our land and you should not have cut these wires. Mm -hmm. That wasn't up to you. That wasn't your place. The federal government in defending that very interesting matchup between federal power and state power has said that is absolutely our purview. We have to patrol, as their name suggests, we have to patrol the border. We are in charge of people crossing the border. We are in charge of investigations. We are in charge of the safety and welfare of those who are crossing the border. And so what you had here is two lower court rulings in favor of Texas, in this case, the Supreme Court jumping in on an emergency application. There's no reasoning, as is typically the case for an emergency application, five to four with Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Amy Coney Barrett joining the liberal justices saying the federal Border Patrol agents can go ahead and in certain circumstances can basically break apart that wire in order to allow people to cross. But as you've been saying, it's also not the end of the story. This case will still be litigated. This is not a decision on the merits. This is a decision based on an emergency application. Um, so as you heard there, Amy Comey Barrett um, joined the left and voted to allow Joe Biden's minions to go in and allow illegal immigrants in. Now, I have a thought, but before we get to that, yeah, I'm burying it a little bit. Um, I want to play this clip. Nikki Haley will never secure the border. She doesn't believe in the secure borders. She can't believe in them. She actually opposed my border wall. And she was out of, you know, out of all of a sudden she's opposing the wall. I say, what the hell is going on? She's actually opposing it because she's basically, as you see, you know, when you have all of those Democrats coming in to vote. I don't know that she's a Democrat, but she's very close. She's far too close for you. She condemned the things we were doing with the wall, and yet we had the greatest border, the safest border we've ever had. That included, by the way, your human trafficking. We had the lowest numbers in 38 years. One of the ho most horrible things we have going on in the world is human trafficking. You think it's an ancient thing. It's not. And what made it so profitable and so big now is the computer, the, the Internet. The Internet made all of that, and it's mostly in women. They traffic in women. And it's a terrible, terrible scourge. And she didn't fight it like she's supposed to fight it. That's facts. Nikki Haley uh, believes in an open border. And I wanted to dive into this a little bit more. President, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. We'll seal the border. 
shut down, and we won. With your support, we will soon be taking the oath of office on the steps of the United States Capitol, and we're going to have a whole, we're going to have a whole different country. As soon as I lift my hand from the Bible as your 47th president, I will seal the border, shut down the invasion of millions and millions of people coming into our country, and we will start an energy revolution. We have more than anybody else. As soon as he lifts his hand from the Bible, the border is shut down. And for those of you that don't think Nikki Haley is, um, you know, for an open border, I'll let her tell you. But let's keep in mind, these people that are wanting to come here, they want to come for a better life, too. They have kids, too. They have a heart, too. They, so we don't need to be disrespectful. We don't need to talk about them as criminals. They're not. They're families that want a better life, and they're desperate to get here. So because you're a family that wants a better life and you commit a crime, we're not supposed to call you a criminal? Okay. Well, by that logic, there's a lot of people in this country who we shouldn't be calling criminals because they allegedly committed these crimes to feed their families. Yeah. I'm thinking of a video right now of a gentleman who was on camera robbing a place and um, he later brought the money back because he felt bad and he tried to explain that the only reason why he took it was because he had no money to feed his kids. So are we not supposed to call him a criminal? He's a criminal. Now, do I have a heart for him? Yeah, sure. I get it. You want to feed your kids. I hear you. But there's better ways to go about that than to robbing a place. So you're still a criminal. You know, you are still a criminal. And, um, you know, the thing about this is when you have Democrats even agreeing with us on closing the border and these people being criminals, you have a major, major problem. Because remember I said I'm jealous of Democrat politicians because they're always in unison. They're always all saying the exact same thing. They all have the same messaging. Well, seems like someone broke ranks. Because obviously a lot of progressives on Twitter have been attacking you for your position on Israel, uh, for noting that, in your opinion, um, saying that there is a crisis at the border does not make one uh, xenophobic. Um, why do you think you've been so criticized by so many progressives? I honestly don't understand. I, I don't understand why it's controversial to anybody to decide that you're going to stand with Israel in this situation. I honestly don't understand why it's controversial to say we, we need a secure border. Uh, I've been very clear. In fact, that was weaponized against me as Republicans in my race, that I'm very much uh, a strong supporter of immigration. And, you know, my, my wife's family, I, that's the uh, Oregon story about that. Uh, and I think two things can be true at the same time. You can be very supportive of immigration, but we also need to have a secure border. And I really, I think about immigration is we want to provide the American dream for any uh, migrant. But it seems very difficult when you have 300,000 people showing up encountered at, at our border to do that. And I think we need to, to re, do a reset and we have to work together uh, and develop uh, a new comprehensive solution to that. And that would also unlock a lot of the critical aid for Ukraine. Again, we cannot forget about Ukraine. That's that's critical uh, for Israel and Taiwan. That's a very important kind of standard that we have to maintain, that we're going to support and stand with our allies. Yeah. Wow, right? Did you ever think after John Fetterman got elected, did you ever think that you would agree with him on anything? <laughs> Well, that day has come, I'm sure, for a lot of you. Now, I don't agree with everything that he said there. But I'm sure we all agree. <laughs> At least in part with Fetterman right there. And I bet you never thought that would happen. <laughs> oh, man, you love to hear it. Speaking some facts. You know, and, it, and it's also kind of interesting that um, if you guys remember, I believe he went to the hospital to, you know, get his mental health right. 
and he came back out based. Isn't that interesting? He went to get his mental health right, which is great, as he should, right? Take care of yourself. But he came back out based. He came back out sounding like a Republican, more like a Republican than a Democrat. Hmm. Kind of interesting how that works. I thought I'd, thought I'd note that one, you know? Kind of interesting right there. But um, back to the Supreme Court drama. Now, hear me out on this before you, you tune me out. Because I know a lot of you are going to turn up your nose at what I'm about to say. But let me finish before you do so. Grant me that, okay? Because I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. I, the Supreme Court ruling in favor of Democrats to allow Joe Biden and his minions to essentially open back up the border in Texas, I think was a smart slash strategic move. I know some of you are like, wait, <laughs> you told me to let you finish. So I'm going to let you finish, Rich, but I got a problem with that. And listen, hey, listen, I agree with Texas. I agree with Greg Abbott. He should close the border. But I also kind of agree with the Supreme Court on this. Let me explain. The Supreme Court has quite a few um, important decisions coming up here soon. The Democrats have tried to delegitimize the Supreme Court at every turn. What's the only thing that keeps the Supreme Court relevant? People can say the Constitution. Well, Democrats already don't care about that one. Um, but in my eyes, the, the, the belief in the court is what keeps it relevant, right? Because it's just the court at the end of the day. They can't enforce anything. It's not like Clarence Thomas is about to be out here arresting people, right? So people have to believe in their rulings, right? Democrats have tried at every turn to delegitimize them. So if you have a situation where the Supreme Court is ruling in favor of Republicans at every turn, as they should, which is the right decision, I, may, I might add, it's the right decision, it's the fair decision, it's the right decision, but Democrats are going to spin that as, oh, the Supreme Court is only here to support Republicans. We need to pack the Supreme Court. We need to get rid of the Supreme Court. We need to ignore the Supreme Court, blah, 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 blah. I can see it from a mile away. I know what they would do. But if you have instances like this of the Supreme Court ruling in favor of Democrats, it makes it a little harder to say something like that, doesn't it? Especially at a time where important rulings are coming up, i.e. the ruling on Trump. Um, and so, which they already ruled a little bit in favor of Trump when Jack Smith tried to expedite the process. And he said, um, no, uh, this is going to uh, get put in line, just like all of the other trials and decisions, right? Where we're not going to, you're not going to cut the line and come to the front, get in line. Okay, get in line which was a ruling in favor of Trump because they wanted to expedite that. The government wanted to expedite that or Jack Smith, I should say. So when you have big decisions like that coming up and you know which way you're going to rule on it, people have speculated that they are going to rule 9-0 in Trump's favor in, some, in, in, in uh, um, the, um, the, the ballot situation. Right. So when you have these type of decisions coming up where, you know, Democrats are going to cry. And I'm not saying we should cater to Democrats at every turn. But what I am saying is you have to be strategic. This has to be chess, not checkers. Right. In my humble. Now, this is just my humble opinion. Y'all can let me know if you agree in the comment section. So when you have these big decisions and you know, you're going to rule in favor of Republicans, throw Democrats a little bone. So they can't say that you're illegitimate because you only rule in favor of Republicans. Oh, well, actually, no, we don't. Because, see, the border situation, we actually agreed with Joe Biden. See, no, that's that's not the case. See, see, what I'm go see where I'm going with this? Now, when Trump gets back into office and we fix this whole mess so that we never have to play this game again, now we're good. But until then, in my humble opinion, you have to play chess, not checkers. You, de you delegitimize the Supreme Court, 
Now they take Trump off the ballot and don't care about what the Supreme Court says because they've allowed, they, they, they've fed that narrative to their base, right? So now their base doesn't believe in the Supreme Court at all. So now they feel like they can do whatever they want. They control the government, right? Meaning they set the rules at this point in time, unfortunately. So beat them at their own game. That's the way that I see it. Like, I see this, and may, maybe it's the wrong way to think about this, but I, I see this as like a game, literally, of chess. I'm trying to be strategic, and I'm trying to beat you at your own game. You want me You want me to do and make these certain moves because you know you got me over here. I'm going to make you think that I'm going there. I may even sacrifice one of my pieces to make you think I've played into your trap. While I'm setting this up over here. So while you 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 salivating, you like Pavlov's dog, just just ready, just oh yeah, here we go. Nope. Over here. Chess, not checkers. Y'all let me know if that makes sense. Um, if you agree, disagree, y'all let me know. You let me know. I, I I will take the proverbial L on the border situation so that we make sure that we can get our W's where it actually matters. And rightfully so, right? Because the fair and honest decision on the Trump cases is obvious. So I don't want um, anything else to interfere with that. So yeah, I, I, I'll take the proverbial L on the border to get an honest and fair decision on Trump. And so Democrats can't run with that BS narrative. And he walks back into the White House. That's just my humble opinion on it. Chestnut checkers, baby. Chestnut checkers. Got to be strategic um, in my humble opinion. Otherwise, you're going to have a poop storm on your hands that you're not going to be able to walk out of. That's my humble estimation. And my focus is on winning. And you heard Trump there. As soon as he takes his hand off of that Bible, that border's getting closed and people are getting shipped out in droves. Uh, if I remember correctly, he said a deportation uh, um, program, the likes of which we've never seen in our entire lives. So there's going to be masses of people deported. So I'm, I'm not too worried about the border, right? Do I want to close it? Absolutely. What I want to do is get Trump back in that White House because I know that's going to fix a lot of this stuff that is happening. But if we try to take these little W's and don't get the big one, then none of this other stuff matters at all. In my humble opinion. But y'all let me know your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section. Do you agree with playing chess, not checkers? Talk to me. Peace and love. I'm out.